next step is getting customers. You have your products perfected. You have your logo and theme set and ready to go. You've taken good quality pictures of your products. Now it's time to get customers. A big thing, not the number one thing. I say the number one thing is a lot of things. A big thing is a lot of people go into this thinking all my friends and family are going to buy from me. And that is very rarely the case. You cannot rely on your friends and family to be your customer. They are not your customer, but they should be your cheerleaders. So you've created your, your web page, your social media accounts, your business pages, all that stuff. Whatever platforms you decide you're going to sell on, you've got that ready to go. If you need help with social media platforms, there will be a video for that coming. Let's say you have it all set up. You've started posting products. You can rely and you should rely on your friends and family to cheer you on. Ask them to go to your business page, like, comment, share, all those things boost you to get seen. The more comments, likes, and shares that you get, the more that those platforms are going to show your products. So you can rely on them and you should rely on them to be your cheerleaders, but not to be your customers. I highly recommend putting your products in a few people's hands at no cost or at a very, very low cost so that they can, they can review your product um, honestly on your business pages. Now obviously if they've reviewed your product and they don't like it, you should have done that part of it before you've actually posted. You should have perfected your product first. So you've perfected your product and you have your product out into the world. You can promote it by putting it in the hands of other people, not your friends and family, honest customers. Um, so maybe if you have someone you really, really trust and you know wants to support you, give them one of your products for free or at a very low cost and ask them to go to your page and promote it. Leave a review, comment on the picture, take a picture, one of their own customer photos and share it. Those help you get seen so much more. Pause. So one of the biggest things in owning a business using online, an online business and using, using social media to get yourself seen is you don't want to nonstop just post products or post items for sale. You want your customers to get to know you. I scream this from the rooftops every single time I can. Your customers are purchasing from you, not just because of your product, but because they uh, form relationships with you. Now this isn't always the case, and this isn't the case in every single business, but this is a huge one for me. I really truly feel like my customers tend to stick with me because I've let them get to know me. I do not get super, super, super personal all the time. I could go on a rant about that a little bit, but I won't today. But you do want to be fun, be engaging, be encouraging, uplift other women, especially if your business is, uh, your customer is aimed at women. Be encouraging, be uplifting, never be catty, never be dramatic, and let your customers get to know you on your personal page. Play games with them. Ask them questions. Ask them how their day is going. Tell them funny stories or, or uh, interesting stories about how your day went. Be willing to share a little bit to let your customers get to know you on a more personal level. So for every post, so for every three to five posts that you share on your page, only maybe two of them should be products you're, you're selling. So you don't want to be push, 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 push to sell. You want to be engaging and let your customers get to know you. It's very, very important. Another thing is I would always, always, always ask for your customers' emails or the form of contact they would like. If they're willing to give you their phone number so you can text them, I I hesitate to offer my phone number because I don't want my customers texting me. But, but if you're the type of person that don't mind that, get their phone number. I'm more of an email type person. I don't even want personal people tech calling me, honestly. I want to use email as a form of communication, so I'm going to ask my customers for their email, and that's how I'm going to push out uh, promoting when something new comes out, announcing different events that I'm having, and stuff like that. Another really good idea, idea to get your customers involved is ask, say you, if you're making hair bows, ask for their child's, for their daughter's birthday. Offer a free birthday bow once a year. Um, also, another good way to get your customers excited is by doing some sort of VIP program. Only offer it to a certain amount of people. This is something I do in my personal group. Only offer it to a certain amount of people. Do a set cost. 
If you need help with setting up a VIP program, just let me know in the community group and we'll talk about it more there. But VIP is very, very good. It's like a guaranteed monthly income. It's exciting for you and it's exciting for your customer. Find partners to collab with. So say, say you are making hair bows, and I know I'm mentioning hair bows a lot, but that's because that's who my ideal customer is. But if you're making other products, find someone to collab with that your product can go easily with. So say you're making hair bows, you could find clothing designers or boutiques that sell, sell um, clothing and you could make bows to match their outfits and you could collab together um, to make a whole outfit together. Um, or do some sort of giveaways or funny bits and stuff like that. It's a great idea. Another good thing is getting, so, so my business is primarily online. Um, and, and if I'm being completely honest, people in my local area probably don't even know I exist very much. Honestly, that's because I really don't have time to push in my local area right now. But I highly recommend that if you are struggling or if you're just getting started and you do have the time, push in your local area. Um, around me, every single neighborhood has a Facebook group. Like there's a Facebook group for my neighborhood. There's a Facebook group for the neighborhood next to us everywhere has a neighborhood group. Push your products in those groups as long as they're allowed. There's usually some sort of like business uh, groups and not like a lot of groups are saying you can't sell your own products, you can't promote your own products, but a lot of groups will. So just make sure you're following the rules. Get your get yourself known out there. Check for local events, local um, marketplaces, craft fairs and stuff like that. But do your research. I've posted about this several times before. If you're going to do craft fairs, make sure you do your research about the craft fair itself. A lot of times you'll get out there and you'll have a craft fair that's never never happened before. It's not like an annual thing, it's a new thing. And they don't promote very well or they'll put you and someone who does the exact same products as you right next to each other and then you have competition side by side and that's never fun. So just do your research before you do those events um, and before you pay for them. They could be really, really good though. Do your research. If you have questions about that, go over to the community community page and I'll let you know uh, and help you out there more. What else? What else? What else? Oh, schools. Schools are so, so, so big. So one thing that I do, pause. One thing that I do is every year I make sure I have some sort of ribbon on hand that matches our school's themes or colors so that I can push in our local groups for moms. If you're in the, in the South, moms is a big deal here for bows. So if you're making shirts, matching school spirit shirts are a big deal. If you make cups, make cups to match football teams, spirit teams, whatever. They are such a big deal in the South and they can be a huge money maker to you. Don't copy other people's designs, as always. Do your own thing, make it unique, and push it. So I make sure I have ribbon that matches our school's theme. So we are um, pirates, so I could do any pirate ribbon, or I could do white, black, and gold, and those match our colors, and I am going to sell out of everything that I offer, I guarantee you. Make it unique and push it to your local moms. Um, you can even contact the PTO of your neighboring schools and say, hey, PTO is always doing things to fundraise. So you may have to offer like a really big bulk um, uh, shipment of some of your product and just uh, discount it a little bit so that PTO can make an income also. But that's another great idea is find out your local PTO groups, whoever's in charge, and say, hey, if you're looking to fundraise, this is a product that I can do, offer it in bulk. Just make sure you meet the deadlines and make sure you're still making a profit. So there's a few ideas to get you some customers and get you seen. Um, in the future videos, we are going to talk about SEO and how to make sure you're marketing properly and all that stuff. But these ideas are really, really important. Make sure you're fun, engaging, and make sure you're always honest and have good integrity. See you next time.